Okay, so surely I'm not the only person who thinks that gaming mice are getting a little bit boring. I mean, ever since trying stuff like this, which is just like a wildly different experience, all of this stuff just kind of falls into the same basket for me. I mean, we had the G Pro Super Light, which was like launched two years ago. The stuff that's come out since then is kind of just this, but in a slightly different shell from a different brand. Uh, there is one exception though, and that's this right here. I mean, Razer are doing things that are very different from everyone else. And especially when we take a closer look at the wireless tech side of things, they are actually ahead of the competition. The first thing that I wanna show you here is something called Motion Sync. And I didn't realize how impressive this was until I actually tested it out for myself. So Motion Sync is a function that syncs the updates between your PC and your mouse. You can think of it as like G-Sync, but for your mouse instead of your monitor. So for example, if you're moving your mouse at a consistent speed, the update updates as well will also be consistent. Here for example, each update that the mouse is sending to the PC is three horizontal counts. The number three isn't important here, but what is important is that every update is the same. Basically it's in sync. Now without motion sync, it looks something like this. One update might be three counts, the next might be one or four counts. The updates are more scattered and almost random. The side effect of this is that now your cursor movement will also be updated in a less synced way. One screen refresh might be a big jump, the next one might be small. This, in my opinion, is the biggest difference in the wireless sensor tech between a Razer Viper V2 Pro, which has motion sync, and a G Pro Super Lite, which doesn't. Now, I know what you must be thinking, right? These two mice both have the same polling rate of 1000 hertz which you know if they're both running at a thousand hertz then the update rate should be the same except it's not so to test this i reached for my mouse testing tool that i built a while ago and used for testing mouse sensor latency basically this can move any mouse across a repeatable programmed path which is exactly what we're after so here's what that simulated path looks like it's a very very simple start and stop motion accelerating and then decelerating over about a second so now we just log the mouse data over that motion period and we can begin to see a difference this graph shows the amount of horizontal movement data that the mouse is sending to the PC per update. So as the motion starts, we can only see one count per update, which is as expected, it's not moving that fast to begin with. But as it speeds up, each update contains more horizontal movement, which is again, as we expect. But then we begin to see the problem that motion sync solves. What we're looking at here is the G Pro Super Lite, and at the peak speed of the mouse testing tool, the mouse could be sending a packet with as much as 13 counts or as little as two counts of horizontal mouse data in the space of a millisecond. That's a pretty big difference. The Viper V2 Pro, on the other hand, looks dramatically better. Each update that the mouse is sending to the PC shows clearly what the mouse is doing, whether it's speeding up or slowing down. So pretty cool. These are real world results of sensor motion sync in action, but we can actually show more of a difference if we use faster movement speeds. Unfortunately, my current testing machine doesn't go that fast, but doing this movement manually, a big fast swipe over the mouse pad while logging the sensor data, we surprisingly get some pretty usable results. Here are two separate swipes of the G Pro Super Lite, and I mean, they look pretty much the same. I'll be the first to say that this is not a perfect test and I didn't even expect it to work. I just kind of tried it out of curiosity, but it is surprisingly very repeatable. So again, all of the tiny little dots here, that's the raw data being sent to the PC and the blue line between them is simply a trend line. So using this manual hand motion, we now peak over 200 horizontal counts sent in a single packet, which is roughly 10 times faster movement than the testing machine that we used previously. We can now see a much bigger difference between the sensor information of the super light versus the Viper V2 Pro. It's a huge, huge difference in how much cleaner that sensor data is arriving to your PC. The Razer is completely dialed in, whereas the Logitech is a lot more sporadic. So yeah, motion sync for the win. This is definitely something that we should be interested in when it comes to the future of gaming mice. Now by using this same information, but just converting the graph to show the frequency that the data is arriving at, effectively the polling rate, we can now understand what is actually happening. Both both mice are of course set to the same polling rate of 1000 Hz for this test and both of them do average 1000 Hz, in other words 1 millisecond updates, but you can see just how rock solid the Viper is compared to the Superlight. With the motion
Station Sync on the Viper, I mean, you're literally getting bang on consistent one millisecond updates once that mouse starts moving, whereas the Superlight is a lot more sporadic. Could be as slow as two milliseconds or as fast as 0.2 milliseconds. That's the problem that Motion Sync is solving. And to be fair to Logitech, this isn't just what we see on the Superlight. I also tested the Final Mouse Starlight 12 Phantom with the newest firmware, and we do see something similar. Maybe a little bit better at lower mouse velocities and slightly worse at faster speeds, but still more sporadic polling compared to Motion Sync. And then here's what the Extrafy MZ1 wireless looks like. Not so much sporadic this time, but almost like the polling rate is in some sort of pattern, which is similar actually to the Zorn Koenig M2K. Maybe less exaggerated here, but almost the same thing. So clearly Motion Sync is a feature that we should be looking forward to. It's pretty cool, right? Objectively, it is better than without it. The consistent updates are just so much cleaner in terms of input but it's not necessarily a feature that you're going to notice when you're actually playing. The main reason for that is that your monitor is updating at a much slower rate compared to your gaming mouse. I mean, even if you have a 240 hertz monitor, that is over four times slower than a 1000 hertz polling rate on a gaming mouse. What that means is that you don't actually end up seeing all of that jittery, sporadic uh, input data, and instead you're actually seeing the summation of that in four millisecond or so blocks. And so the result here is that you actually see a pretty smooth and timely update even without motion sync. There are still some kinks in the motion data though, that's usually where a packet was slightly late or missed the screen refresh or maybe the opposite, more updates than usual make it into that 240Hz interval. Now when we restrict the motion sync data to that same 240Hz refresh window, essentially what you would see on a 240Hz monitor, it's a nice smooth flawless input. No kinks that you would otherwise see here on 1000Hz mice. Now, although motion sync used to be a feature that was exclusive to Razer, uh, it is something that you'll now see on some upcoming gaming mice. Basically, any mouse with a PMW 3395 sensor or above, say 3399 for example, will have the option to have motion sync enabled, and most of them will have it enabled by default. Uh, some examples include the Fantech Aria, the Pulsar X2 and X2 Mini, and the upcoming, uh, I mean, hopefully upcoming, and Game Gear XM2W. Now, my understanding is that it's mostly a hardware related feature from Pixar, so hopefully there's not much actual software implementation by the manufacturer that needs to be done to get it right. Hopefully it's exactly as what we just saw. Still though, Razer have something else that no other mouse company has, at least for now, and that's a wireless 4000 hertz polling rate. Using their new hyper polling receiver, the Viper V2 Pro and a few of their other wireless mice can be run at up to 4000 hertz. Because no matter how well you can sync a 1000 hertz polling rate with your PC, you're still going to be out of sync with your monitor, and that still leaves a little bit of room for potential delay. Essentially, you're still seeing some slightly old mouse input data on your screen. And that's the primary benefit of 4000 hertz, and just higher polling rates in general. You're getting an input which is most of the time more recent compared to 1000 hertz, which on 240 hertz monitors and above should feel slightly more responsive. I'm not sure if motion sync is still enabled on 4000 hertz here. Using the same swipe test as before, you can see the input looks nice and clean, and we have a lot more data to work with, but converting it to a polling rate chart, it does look a little bit more scattered. If I had to guess, motion sync probably isn't enabled at this higher polling rate, but to be honest, it doesn't really matter because the input is still extremely clean. Now the hyper polling receiver is pretty cool, but it is something that will be sold separately, and it's not exactly cheap or very available for a USB receiver. It's kind of sold out at the moment and the pricing seems to be going up from their initial announcement. But I have to say no other mouse company is doing this. And I think that should be applauded and at least encouraged, especially when a lot of people are getting their hands on 240 Hertz monitors and more monitors are actually exceeding that 240 Hertz refresh rate. And we actually have a lot more enthusiast models around 360 Hertz. Now motion sync and higher polling rates are really fun to talk about, really fun to dive into and you know almost pretend they're really important. But I think you should still primarily buy your gaming mice based off of the shape the weight uh, and how it actually feels to you in game and the price of course that stuff is way way more important but I do think honestly that we are at the point where we need to talk about this stuff you know the differences in the sensors and the differences in the polling rate and stuff like that that stuff is becoming a lot more important since a lot of these gaming mice just have the basics nailed really well 
a lot of these mouse companies are copying each other's homework and you know delivering a mouse shell 60 grams wireless medium shell that's pretty comfy so at that point we should be looking at the other stuff like the wireless implementation so hopefully you found this one interesting as always a huge thanks for watching and i'll see you all in the next one